As we take a look at uh, the watches, those are to the north, and this is where we're expecting significant accumulation and gusts, which could be up to 30, 35 miles per hour. If you look down to the south, that's the area where we don't see much in terms of watches or warnings or concerns, and that's because most likely the city is going to see a significant amount of rain or a mix at best. So the next several days, let's talk about what goes on. Saturday morning, we're looking at this system, this low pressure system beginning to work its way in. Still not feeling its effects, seeing as we look along the coastline and through the area, seeing what will be most likely cloudy skies, and then it begins to work its way toward us with that narrow line of a mix. Very narrow. How narrow? Maybe 10 to 15 miles wide. And if we keep in mind that there's going to be a significant amount of uh, rain, the reason for that is because the most likely those winds initially will come in out of the east keeping the temperatures warm right along the coastline. As we head into Sunday, that low pressure system moves on. The winds come out of the north. We'll see some residual snow as we head to the north of the city, and then that system will move out. Precipitation type uh, will put New York City in that wet mix area as we head Saturday night into Sunday. This is an all rain event as we head to the Jersey Shore, and most likely as we head to the south shore of Long Island, at least. So the flooding concerns are going to be here and here and even in and around the five boroughs in areas which uh, flood when there's a significant amount of rain. Hour by hour, let's take you through it. This is uh, this afternoon at 1 p.m. Temperatures are on the cold side. Wind chills are about 5 to 10 degrees cooler than the thermometer reflects. We're at 11 p.m. We're into the 20s to the north and west. We're at 7 a.m. below the freezing mark in the city under cloudy skies, but we're going to have to wait until the afternoon to see the main event approach. This is about 3 o'clock. It's already started snowing out to the west and to the northwest, and you can see now we're at 7 o'clock and watch in and around the city a pretty significant amount of rain. Watch the temperatures, 37 degrees at 7 p.m., 35 in White Plains, but colder up to the north and northwest. That's where we're seeing those cooler conditions. This takes us into Sunday. It's a pretty rapid departure. We could see some lingering shower activity, snow shower activity as we head into Sunday with those cool temperatures and then it's gone and we look ahead to the next storm. But zone impacts as we head up to areas to the far north and far west, 8 to 12 inches of heavy snow Sunday afternoon and as we get closer to the city those snow totals go down. As we get into the city, they are almost non-existent and we're talking about rain events. We'll have much more for you in just a little while. We'll send it back to you. All right, looks like the city's two-year snow drought may continue, Dave. May Thank you. But up north, they are getting ready for some snow. And let's continue our team coverage now with News 4's Mark Santia in Westchester with a look there. Hey, Mark. Hey, Adam. Yeah, the countdown is on. Preparations are being made across Westchester County right now. We're told several roads have been treated. They've been brined, making that snow easier to clear when it does fall here. The county also telling us they have a strategy, a plan in place. The other focus right now, Adam, the rails. A short time ago, Metro North President, Metro North Railroad President, shared their strategy for the storm this weekend. Even though we haven't had snow in two years, we haven't lost those muscles. We know how to prepare. Uh, we have snow fighting trains, tow trucks, de-icing equipment. We've outfitted our, our, our own trains to be able to allow them to run through the bad weather. The way to keep the tracks clean is to keep the trains running. We're not planning on canceling any service at this point in time. But it is possible that we'll experience delays during the height of the storm. And a, and a reminder, Adam, before you leave the house and head out into the snow this weekend to catch that train, check the train app. Make sure your train is on time so you're not just hanging outside. You don't want to, it's going to be very cold. It's going to be windy up here in Westchester, a lot of snow. So obviously, check the app, make sure your train's running on time, and make sure everything's sort of flowing. Again, Metro North saying it's going to be moment by moment. They're going to check. They do have a strategy in place, but they're encouraging everyone to check that app before you head out. We're live in Hartsdale. I'm Mark Santia, News 4 New York. Yeah, definitely good advice, Mark. Hopefully the weekend event should help a little bit with the lower ridership, though. Thank you very much. Let's continue our team coverage with News 4's Pat Battle now, joining us live from Paramus, New Jersey, with a look at how crews are getting ready. Pat, we might be a little rusty. We've got to shake it off and get ready. 
And you know what? I, I'm, I, I'm here with the director of the DPW, the superintendent, and he tells me that riding a snowplow is a lot like riding a bike. You just do it. And they've gotten so used to this over the years. This is Hassan Brown, and I know you've been prepping for this all week long. Did that entail anything different, given that you haven't had snow in two years? Yeah, we actually had to go get the plows. We had them at a different location. <laughs> so we had to bring the plows down and uh, make sure everything was still working. Hoses and make sure the lines are all good. And uh, yeah, it's been two years since we had a plowable snowstorm. So yeah. How excited are you about this, Mr. Brown? Uh, <laughs> Very excited. <laughs> no, I listen. We do this for a living. This is this is what we do. Uh, I got a great group of guys. We're praying for. We're preparing for snow, praying for rain, so we'll see what happens. you got a fleet. you got quite a fleet. You've got some new trucks here we see behind you. You've got a fleet of about, what, 50? About 50, 50 trucks on the road, uh, five plow truck uh, loaders. We have about nine sanitation trucks, recycling trucks, and we also have about 24 road trucks, dump trucks. And you're, all those guys are coming in tomorrow. Now, you've been watching the forecast almost as closely as Storm Team 4. So tell me what you're seeing and what you're planning to do in terms of getting your folks here and getting these trucks on the road tomorrow. Well, the last update I got, we were looking at, we're on a, the one to three inch line, mm -hmm. but it can, it can go either way. Um, so I got my guys coming in tomorrow, around six o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Mm -hmm. If it starts earlier, we'll come in earlier, but we're scheduled for six o'clock and we'll just rotate and see what the what the night brings. Now you, you talk about that line of demarcation quite literally here in Paramus. You have a literal line. Yeah, so Midland Ave in Paramus is our cutoff line. That's anything south of south of Midland Ave doesn't get as much snow, but if you go north, they get more snow on that side. It's a literal cutoff line. It could be snowing, you said on one? It can snow on the north side and be drizzling on the south side. It it's a literal line that cuts off. It yeah. Insane. Yeah. But whatever comes, you're, you're, you're ready for it. Yeah, we're prepared. Line. We've been preparing all week. Um, the guys make sure everything is uh, tightened up, ready to go, and, and we're ready. And we're ready. Now, this, you, you've been watching the forecast, obviously. You're looking long term as well. Uh, you're keeping the plows here? Uh, yeah, they'll, they'll be here for the duration. <laughs> yes, they will. <laughs> for this winter. Yeah. All right. Yep. Well, we're wishing you a, a, a good luck out there, and we'll be seeing you out on the road. Tell folks, don't put the snow back in the streets. Please, please do not put the snow in the streets. Give us time to get it cleaned up, and then we'll make sure you're good. All we'll right. make sure the roads are passable. All right. Well, thank you so much. Y'all stay you. safe out there. Hassan Brown, superintendent of public works here in Paramus. We're on Pat Battle Live. We're in the DPW yard, and uh, we'll toss it back over to you. All right, Pat, I'm glad to see the crews are excited to see some snow finally, too. It's not just all the kids They're out there. Very excited. Right, Pat, thank you. <laughs> we'll check in later. <laughs> Enjoy it. And Storm Team 4 is Violet Yas with us now. But, you know, how much snow people get really will vary in this kind of storm depending on where you are. Yeah, he made some really great points about some of the elevation across North Jersey. That makes a big difference, too. So we'll have one area where this is a sort of true snowstorm, and then other areas where we'll get a little bit more of a mixed bag. So let's go over that snow map. Of course, we've been talking about how this is not going to be a major snow event for New York City. We'll get some snow at the onset before warmer air starts to work in and then that changes to rain. That's why we're seeing those lower lower totals here closer to the coast. So really, um, we're just looking at rain here across New Jersey and extending into Long Island. Very little, if any, snowfall. But once you get up into Passaic County, up through Sussex, Warren, and into Pike, Sullivan, Ulster, that is where we're expecting this to stay predominantly snow. And that's why they're expecting those higher totals there. So let's take a look at sort of where we should be for this time of year. Central uh, Park specifically, our season to date snowfall this winter so far, as you all know, zero. Normally we would have 6.3 inches this, of course, beginning December 1st. Now, on average, our first measurable snow occurs December 7th. So we're looking at about a month ago, but October 15th, the earliest on record, the latest on record, February 4th, that was just last year. We picked up just under half an inch of snow. So we've been seeing this trend, of course, with this first snow occurring later and later. February is typically our snowiest winter month, but notice that uptick beginning in December, that's what we've really been missing. And then January especially once you get into those later parts of the month is when we really start to accumulate uh, some of those higher amounts, January and February. So uh, our first snowfall, again, this is an issue that is not unique to Central Park specifically. This is what we've been seeing for most of our major reporting sites. JFK Airport, the average for snowfall, uh, December 9th, December 7th for Newark, Islip, 
December 13th and Bridgeport December 3rd. And for all of them, we're going into, of course, early January. So that first average snowfall, typically that first or second week of December. So let's take a look back at what we have been seeing. About a year and a month ago, we had uh, a, just under a half an inch February 1st. And then you go back about another year and a month. We picked up on January 7th, 5.8 inches. This back in 2022. But our biggest recent snowfall, recent, of course, being used relative in this sense, January 31st, 2021 into February 1st, 17 inches of snow. Imagine that it's just a couple of years ago, but it has just uh, felt like it has been so long. Of course, in our case with this particular storm for Central Park, this is mostly going to be a rain event. We'll get some snow at the onset that changes to rain and then whatever we did accumulate is likely to wash away. So we do have that flood threat. Here's the storm, of course, that's going to be tracking here to the north and east, eventually bringing that warmer air with it. But then we have our site on another storm. Once this storm for tomorrow, and into the weekend moves out. High pressure builds in for Monday and Tuesday, but then we get this other system. That is a lot of moisture. This one set to bring quite a bit of rain to the area as we head into that Tuesday and Wednesday time frame. So on top of any rain we pick up with this storm, we could be looking at an additional two to three inches or in some spots anywhere to, from uh, three to four inches in additional rainfall. So flooding is going to be a concern here, not only in the short term, but into the long term as well. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that just as much as we've been keeping an eye on these areas that are expected to get the heavier snow amount. So luckily in this case, uh, upstate New York and into the Hudson yeah. Valley, the places that really would love to see that snow are going to be getting it in this situation. Okay, good for the skiers yes. and snowboarders out there too. I know they're desperate for it. Let's go through the timing one more time for people in the snow zone. We're talking yes. tomorrow afternoon, yes. you start to see it and then lasting through the evening? Yeah, so we'll see everything overspread the area tomorrow afternoon becoming steadier and heavier as we head into the evening. So again, if you wanna get anything done outdoors, the morning is gonna right. be your best bet and we'll see things continue overnight and then sort of taper off and dwindle into early Sunday morning. So later on Sunday, we should be in, in pretty good shape in terms of anything falling at that moment. A good day to enjoy the snow yes. and stay home and play in the yard, yes. right? Okay, bye, thank you so much. Remember, for more news and weather anytime, go to NBCNewYork.com or just keep it right here. Wherever you stream news for, I'm Adam Cooperstein. That is it for now. See you next time. Thanks for watching.